IGN posted a final preview of Dragon Ball Spark and Zero. We're going to go ahead and check it out. Make sure you guys leave a like in this video. Subscribe if you're new. If you want some more Dragon Ball Spark and Zero content on the channel, we're kicking it up, baby. Let's get it. All right. So we have here the actual uh, IGN footage um, from um, for Spark and Zero. Sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and unmute this site and get on into it. Bro, it's gonna be crazy, bro. Do you see where we're at? We're fighting Super Saiyan 3 Goku with freaking. Oh, this is. Whew. Ah. The Dragon Ball Tenkaichi series is one that meant a lot to me as a teenager and young adult, which was about the peak of my obsession with Dragon Ball Z. The Ajirobe, baby. But yeah, this is Budokai Tenkaichi 3. But let's get into Zero, what they think felt like of I the was preview. With the spirit bomb of nostalgia, as I once again got back in there, chaining together rapid movement teleports, yeah. bouncing my foes like ping pong balls between multiple vanishing attacks. Yeah. It looks so smooth and crisp, man. Yeah. And kicking them away with so much force that they destroy mountains. Yeah. Okay. It was like reuniting with a look at Goku, bro. Look at this, man. Your old friend. This and is yet, sick. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero feels like much more than just a nostalgia play. It's packed with new mechanics, a brand new approach to story mode, and a host of other exciting. And that's what I kind of wanted to emphasize. There's their approach to the new story mode as actually new and innovative. I like what they did with the story mode. I thought it was going to be a little bit more simpler and um, kind of just out the way. But they made sure that they took their time and effort with it, with that as well, and making also allowing us to improve on the customization of it doing what ifs and uh allowing other scenarios to take place within the story so i really like that features that i only got a taste of but i'm excited to dig more into it once it comes out next month the first two hours of my hands-on time was spent on free play I used a large chunk of this time to refamiliarize myself with the Tenkaichi style of gameplay by hitting up Sparking Zero's exhaustive tutorial mode, which covers all the many, many different mechanics present here. Over here. So yeah, so it looks like the, the training is actually going to be very extensive, which is what I was hoping for, because I didn't want it to be like Raging Blast or Tenkaichi, where it was kind of more so basic, and it was um, just showing you the basic controls, but they it looks like they're going to get real in-depth here. I'll show you the in-depth control so you're look it looks like you actually have to spend a lot of more a lot more time in the training room than you probably would it looks like what they're trying to do is making sure that classic players or players from before don't just hop in here and just start just start wailing it because if they kept the same controls exact which i think and when we see some or more gameplay in my future videos that you can actually change up your uh keen binds i'm not i'm not sure if we can confirm that right now but if that is not true, even if it's, it is, they're still trying to make sure that classic or people that uh, didn't haven't played it in a while don't just get in here and start, you know, doing it. But also so that new players can still learn with them. So they're creating a middle ground so that everybody is still in the training room training, trying to get better at the same time rather than uh, older players just getting on in. And, OK, I'm, I'm just going to push some older players are probably still going to do that because they're still playing Tenkaichi to this day. But mostly uh, the general people are probably going to get in and still want to spend the same amount of time in training newer players will just have to get acclimated to the style and uh just basically the newer dragon ball game because if you came from xenoverse if that's all you played it's very different it's not like xenoverse it's not like fighters it's very 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 different so if, if you haven't been playing any of the previous iterations like raging blast 2 raging blast or take ig3 then you're gonna have to put yourself into the training room a lot there are vanishing assaults, vanishing attacks, lightning attacks, nice not move. done yet. Burst smashes, dragon smashes, yeah. high guards, low guards, high speed evasion counters, <laughs> perception counters, super counters, Z counters, <laughs> and so on. It's That's a lot. Do you see that? Perception counters, Z counters, all types of mechanics that are being implemented in this game that we're gonna have to learn. That a lot of people are probably gonna, a lot of people are probably gonna skim over. It. They're probably gonna find a core or, or like a bag of things that they know how to do really quickly, and then just go in online. And there's gonna be a, those few people that stay in the training room, like I said, and really dive deep and intricately learn how to do every single thing that they're, learning, they're being taught how to do. Vanishing attacks, lightning attacks, nice not move. done yet. Burst smashes, dragon smashes, yeah. high guards, low guards, high speed evasion counters, perception counters, super counters, Z counters, and so on. 
It's a lot to take in for sure, but it all serves to enhance the depth of the combat and, most importantly, deliver on the power trip of controlling some of the most powerful characters throughout all of anime. Sure, I might not need to know how to knock an enemy away, vanish behind them, drill them into the ground, yeah. and then pick them up, swing them around, and hurl them away like a ragdoll. There are other simpler ways to get just as much damage, if not more, but doing stuff like that feels so incredibly cool. And to me, that's what the... And I think that's what is going to be uh, in between. They're going to be there's going to be like two types of players, guys. That's going to be playing this game. It's going to be your stylish type of players, and then your technical, really technical type of players. Technical type of players are the ones that's going to get you trying to get you down and get you uh, uh, out of the game as quick as possible. The stylish type of players are trying to elongate that battle, and those are the players that are going to be the sweatiest because they're going to try to do all the little combos and string them out and hold them out, hold you in there, key cancel, key uh. Key, uh, uh, what you call it? Key bind you, all that good stuff, and um, it's 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 gonna be crazy to see. I'm not gonna lie. Tenkaichi series is all about. Sorry, nope. <laughs> Lazy. I do love to grab though, just to be very honest. Once I was back up to speed. On now look at, oh my gosh, look at this. This looks wonderful. So the stage and presentation is what I really want to emphasize with this game. Again. I am not trying to dumb down the play of this game as I as I was shown before, but the menus and the and the stuff like this, I didn't really think they were gonna put their all into this like they did. Like they, they went crazy. Look at the presentation of the maps that you choose and where you are, who you're fighting, who you're selecting. Everybody's positioned in a way that it really resembles the the anime. It really resembles like I'm really playing this game as if I'm playing the anime. And so the episode battles, I think, is what's supposed to really push that into making that really worthwhile. On the combat and mechanics, I decided to check out one of Sparking Zero's big new modes outside of its story mode, custom battles. It lets you create, share, and play out your look own Look at Bergamo. Oh, my gosh. Like look at this. This looks so sick. It looks so clean and clear. Uh, it, it is high contrast, though. I will I will say this. In, in, some, in my videos... Maybe because this is, uh, you know, YouTube compresses them. But if some of my videos, I can see that I'm probably going to want to um, kind of color grade these a little bit. Um, just just because it, it's, it is, it seems high. high Complete contact. with options to create an intro cutscene, a title card, mid-match triggers, and outro cutscenes that cover what happens when you win. I am more powerful than you can possibly imagine. And when you lose. You knew you would lose, yet you still defied me. There's even a Mario Maker style rule to it, where in Ooh, order to share your custom look at battle that. with other players, that is that. Uh, now I don't know if I like the camera going in too too much, but it, it does give the effect, bro. It gives so that effect. It gives like you really dodging the hell out of him, bro. That shit is so crazy. Look at the Nimbus. Oh my! Oh, do you see this? Do you see this? You need to be able to prove. That oh it's my god! Yourself. That is Unfortunately, cool. Unfortunately, I didn't have. So look at all these so bonus battles, custom modes. So they, these are probably the ones that you get to choose from that are already available. And so th there's going to be ones that you can, you can actually make as well. The time to craft my own battle to the degree that I would have wanted. So I opted instead to see what the mode was capable of by trying out some of the pre-made battles that were prepped by the developers. And to my delight, they were a lot of fun with a great variety of different types of fights. Some were simply based around the idea of pitting certain characters against each other, like a battle of speed demons that had you controlling Birder as you faced off against Kakunsa. Ah, that's what they would do. Okay, so you get like actual. Another okay, okay that's Goku cool. Going up against Master Roshi to relive one of their training sessions and forcing you to win the fight specifically with whatever move Roshi calls out. Oh, that's lit. My favorite though had me playing as a weak and underpowered. Captain whatever Ginyu move Roshi against... calls out, that's lit an appropriately overpowered Frieza. My only hope for victory was using Ginyu's ultimate technique, the body change beam, to swap bodies with Frieza and then easily finish the fight. Easier said than done, as whenever I tried to power up to be able to use the move, Frieza would hit me with an instant kill death beat. Oh wow. Oh wow. So I had to engage Frieza in combat just enough to be able to charge my meter, knock him away, and then use that time to charge up into sparking mode so that I could look for an opening to land the attack. It was a surprisingly tense and refreshingly unique battle. That was that was pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That this mode has as a sandbox for creative players to come up with and share exciting fights that go far beyond the limits of Dragon Ball's canon. That's what, bro. This what if series is about to go crazy, man. It's gonna go insane. <laughs> 
after the time for free play was up, I got a chance to check out a handful of episode battles, which collectively make up Sparking Zero's story mode. Dragon Ball's story has been told an ungodly number of times at this point, pretty much across all forms of media. But what makes Sparking Zero's interpretation especially cool is how it gives you multiple opportunities to do things differently than how they're supposed to go. Right from the start of Goku's... This, judging by how IGN is talking about this, this might be the best review Dragon Ball game we ever had. Episode battle when Raditz... Maybe, maybe. Not by IGN person, because, you know, IGN generally you know how we feel about them, but just, just from a consensus, yeah. This takes Gohan away and Goku and Piccolo give chase. You actually don't have to join forces with Piccolo. You're given the option to instead go it alone, and if you do that, then you'll be joined by Krillin and fight Raditz in a battle with a completely different outcome. Soon have you writhing agony like the worms you are. That's not all either. Even if you decide to play it by the cannon and team up with Piccolo, if you manage to defeat Raditz before Piccolo is able to charge his attack, you'll be met with a special, fully animated and voice sparking episode that plays out this what if scenario of Goku surviving his encounter with Raditz, getting to train. Ah, oh, that is so cool. Gohan himself and be This is insane, man. They put so much love into this. It's not even funny. They're right when the Saiyans arrive on Earth. Producer Jun Furutani told me that when selecting the battles that they wanted to highlight in episode mode, they wanted to focus on the battles that highlighted the playable characters the best in the story, but they also wanted to put a focus on battles that could potentially lead to branching outcomes. I followed up and asked Furutani about how- So Goku actually gets to train his son. Goku becomes a good father. That's actually crazy. How substantial these branches could be- Nah, man, applied, this is insane. It's a really hard question to answer because depending on which branch we're talking about, it could skew in a very different direction. But some branches might just go back to the actual canonical route again. For example, when you fight Raditz, there's some smaller branches that have been there, but it takes you back to the canonical route. And obviously after Raditz is Vegeta and after Vegeta is Frieza. Some of them are just blips. Some of them kind of take you in a very drastically different direction. So it's like you and never know what situations you're going to get. Each player can mode, play it differently, but differently like the story is not going to be played the I same by everybody. Of Goku's and only got through the Saiyan saga, 30 minutes of Frieza's and only got to the final battle against Super Saiyan Goku, and then 30 to 45 minutes of Future Trunks' story from Dragon Ball Super and pretty much finished it all up right there. Still, I'm very much looking forward to diving into all of these at launch and seeing if I can find all the hidden what if moments myself. It's worth mentioning too that they're not easy to trigger. The fights themselves are already pretty tough, and to try and accomplish. Ah, so there's required. So I'm about to say there might be specific requirements to getting some of these what if scenarios by beating a boss a certain way. So these, this is going to be very, very. This, yeah, this, this story is going to be p crazy. Challenges on top of that makes it seem like these are meant to be rewards for the most dedicated of players. Doubly so because you can't actually trigger these scenes if you lower the difficulty. <laughs> Oh, ho, ho. interesting. So, if you lower, so you cannot lower the difficulty in Sparking Zero. If you do, you miss out on certain scenarios and what if, what if scenarios, or are potential to uh, access different uh, events other than the the one that's canonically uh, put into to the story. That's insane. So you're gonna have people that's probably just gonna play the easy mode and not get everything in the game and wonder why. And is that's because you gotta play it on hard. Beyond the custom and episode battle modes, I also messed around with the tournament mode, which allows you to participate in one of many the tournament mode. That was something that didn't show, show in the showcase, the tournament mode. Tournaments, each with different rule sets. The tournament of power, for example, has you competing on the tournament of power stage with flight turned off and ring outs as an alternate win condition. Mm. Cell games is a strictly one versus one affair with no rules, but you only regain 20% of your life between fights. <laughs> Oh, that's crazy. And the Yamcha games is straight up chaos with random rules and random character selection. You can also create wow. your own tournament the Yamcha and games customize is, your very okay. own set of rules as well. And then finally, there's the encyclopedia mode, which I got to exclusively check out for a few now, minutes. This was pretty neat. This is pretty neat. It's a returning feature from Tenkaichi 3, but instead of just having Chi Chi giving commentary on a character, this time you get Chi Chi, Bulma, and Videl all gossiping about the cast and giving their own little insights. The Discord call is crazy. So <laughs> the little bits I got to listen to were all very amusing. Like the girls commentating on how ugly Goku becomes when he transforms into a Super Saiyan 3 form. Uh, look how scary he is! Or how Garlic Jr. looks like a roided out Emperor Pilaf. 
My I'm weak. Short time I'm Spartan weak. Zero, uh, <laughs> my love they roasted him. For the Budokai Tenkaichi games, and was a much needed reminder that arena fighters can excite Man. and thrill just as much as traditional 2D and 3D. Thank you for that so, so much. If you guys enjoyed this, leave a like in the video, subscribe if you're new, because that was the final preview, breakdown, reaction, more gameplay on episode battles, more uh, insight on what the game is going to look like from the story mode aspect. And so the other videos are going to be targeting gameplay and things like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, leave a like in the video, subscribe if you're new, and get on some more Sparky's Your content. Peace.